The Navy's housing program can be traced back to about 1800, when the Navy established its first shore installations and constructed a few ashore housing quarters. Prior to this effort, ships provided the sole housing support for sailors. Several homes located at the Washington Navy Yard were built between 1801 and 1804, including the Tingey House, which was one of the few structures at the Navy Yard to survive the War of 1812. In 1977, the Tingey House was designated as the official residence of the Chief of Naval Operations. During World War II, Congress passed the Lanham Act, major housing legislation that provided inexpensive military housing built with minimal construction material. While intended only as temporary housing, some of these neighborhoods remained well into the 1980s and 90s. In 1949, Congress passed a law intended to bring private home builders into the military rental housing market without requiring the use of military construction funding. The WARI program supplied the greater portion of new military family housing constructed through the early 1950s. In 1955, the Capehart housing program used private financing but allowed the federal government to retain the property's title. When the service took over the housing project from the sponsor, it became government quarters assigned to service members with families who forfeited their housing allowance. The forfeited housing allowance was then used to pay off the mortgage and the service operated and maintained the project using appropriate funds. In 1957, the services began purchasing the 84,000 privately held wary units, and by the early 1960s, DOD had constructed about 115,000 newer, larger Capehart housing units, drawing tenants away from nearby wary housing. The wary and Capehart housing programs eventually came under common administration, and today are usually mentioned together as wary Capehart. After the Capehart legislation ended, DOD looked for other ways to capitalize on the private sector's post-war home building expertise, and by the late 1960s they had settled on the design, build, or turnkey process. The services defined the number, type, and size of homes needed, and contractors submitted both technical and cost proposals to address those needs. Most military housing built between 1970 and 2000 were constructed under this process. In the Military Construction Authorization Act for fiscal year 1984, Congress enacted and President Reagan signed legislation that established two new pilot programs for military family housing. Dubbed the 801 and 802 programs after the sections of the act that established them, the programs were another attempt to tap the resources of the private sector and improve military family housing. Better family housing, DOD argued, would improve morale and encourage re-enlistment. These factors were especially important for an all-volunteer force, which was just a decade old. As the Reagan administration launched its post-Vietnam buildup of American forces, family housing like manpower and hardware would benefit from increased military spending. In 1993, the Navy proposed pilot legislation to authorize establishment of a joint venture with a private firm to provide a new form of military family housing. While Congress rejected this initial proposal, it did grant the Navy joint venture authority in the FY95 Defense Authorization Act. In 1996, building on the experience of the Wary, Cape Heart, and Navy joint venture authorities, Congress devised the Military Housing Privatization Initiative, giving DOD the ability to entice private investment by authorizing the services to act like private enterprise. As businesses can be creative to take advantage of local real estate market conditions in customizing development projects, this initiative was designed to give similar flexibility to DOD and was intended as a step away from the perceived one-size-fits-all mentality of the earlier housing programs. For the Navy, the basic concept of public-private venture or PPV housing is the formation of a limited liability company with the Navy and a private company. The private company secures the necessary financing and, as the majority member in the LLC, is responsible for the replacement, renovation, maintenance, management, and operation of the conveyed family housing. The Navy, as a minority member in the LLC, maintains a vested interest in ensuring that quality housing is available to service members and that the housing is fully sustained for the life of the 50-year agreement. Under PPV, the service member signs a lease and is responsible for their monthly rent payments to the LLC. By the end of FY07, 95% of CONUS family housing had been privatized. The Navy took this innovative approach a step further when the FY03 Defense Authorization Act permitted the Navy to pursue three unaccompanied housing privatization pilot projects. Naval Station San Diego was the first to receive one of these projects when a contract was awarded in December 2006. Today, the Navy housing program ensures that both single sailors and those with families receive adequate and affordable housing worldwide, 
by partnering with the business community and leveraging our investments to provide better housing quicker. Navy Housing, providing sailors and their families with affordable modern houses in safe communities they can proudly call home.